Hi, this is Ed Gregory for PhotosInColor.com and today I'm going to be editing this photograph from the Photos in Color community in Lightroom. Theme tune! So, today I'm going to be editing this photograph sent in by Sean Talag, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, and it is of the Emirates Palace in Abu Dhabi. Now, he sent this photograph in via the Photos in Colour Facebook page. So, if you want to send in a photograph for me to edit, please hop over to Facebook, give the page a like, and send me some photographs. So, let's jump into Lightroom and have a look at this edit that I do today. Okay, so here we are inside Lightroom. And we can see at the top here, this is the photograph taken of the Emirates Palace. And it was taken at one four thousandth of a second at 18 millimeters. So it's nice and wide at ISO 1250. So by looking at this, we know ISO 1250, we may have a little bit of grain in there. And it's nice and wide, so there may be some lens distortion. So the first thing I would do in this image is I would scroll down and I would go to the lens corrections and I would come into where it says basic, enable profile corrections. So I'll see if it would do it. Now it hasn't found which, which um, lens it was, okay? So instead what I'd do is it, I'd just go full. And by clicking on this, okay, great. Now what it's done here is it's made everything nice and square. It's been very easy for Lightroom to sort out. But we do have these white sections here because that's why it's pulled the image in to make it straight. If we just hit constrain crop, it's just going to crop out all of that and then it's going to make it nice and square. So let's look at the before and the after already. Huge difference. Okay, so what would I do next? Well, I would come up to the top and I would look at the tone curve. Okay, I'm sorry, um, the histogram. Now we can see here it's plenty in the highlights and not many shadows. And the mid-tone, it's looking pretty nice, but what I'd want to do is drag this back a little bit. And we can see what's happening to the um, histogram here. It's pulling it in, it's reduced my white. So that's giving me a good sense of what I would want to do. I would also, just because of the sky, I know that I want to pull my highlights back. And this now looks great. The sky is starting to pop. And let's bring up these shadows in this area a little bit. I don't want to go too far on those whites though. I'm going to go more like this. So let's look again here, before and after. Starting to look really fantastic. Now, the next thing I would want to do is to really work on this building, okay? And work on the sky. So let's start there. I would probably, the first thing I would do is work on the sky. So we're gonna go for a, a gradient, um, graduated filter. And I'm just gonna pull a filter in like so. Holding the shift is gonna make it square. Now that's important for this image because it's a very square image. So let's go somewhere like this. Double click the effect button to reset. Now what I'm gonna want to do is I'm gonna wanna pull the highlights down. So you can see exactly it's gonna bring that definition back in the clouds. Push the contrast up just a little bit here. And I'm probably gonna to wanna to pull those shadows back a little bit too. That looks great and I'm actually gonna boost the clarity. Look what happens to the sky when you hit clarity. Looks great. But what we can see, I'm gonna go around here and I'm gonna boost the saturation. Just, in fact, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave the saturation. I'll show you why now, um, well, in a moment. What I'm going to want to do, if I hit O here, I'm going to see where this mask is take, taking effect. So I'm going to extend it down lower so it fades down here. That's good. But what I've done is I've covered this building, okay? So to get rid of that, I just hit Brush, Erase, and I'm going to have this up higher 100% flow, so it's going to actually get rid of it. And literally, all I need to do is paint over the building. You can see it's gonna get rid of the red. Now also at this point, I'm not gonna to go to the very edges, okay? Now I'm gonna change the flow down a little bit. And now I'm gonna fill in the edges. What that's gonna do is it's, it's gonna not create too much of a hard line. And I'm actually gonna go even lower. And I'm just gonna paint away that so that it, it's gonna blend a little bit. Now if I hit O, you can't actually see where that is going. Well, I can see it here a little bit. So I'm just gonna paint that. Now, let's come out of this and let's look at the before and the after, okay? Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sync the lens corrections for the rest of this so that we can actually see the other effects. So if I hit shift and hold these two down, making sure that I'm on this image that I've got selected with the corrections, hit sync and I'm gonna make sure check none 
And then I'm going to come to Lens Corrections to check all. Process version, yes, and I'm going to hit Synchronize. And what's going to happen is that's going to sync the other one with the lens corrections, but nothing else. So again, let's look at the let's look at the before. So now we can look at what we're doing with all the other settings. We've made some great changes already. Now the next thing I would do here, though, and I'm going to come into HSL, and this is really important because the sky look. I'm going to pull back the blue. Boom. Okay, way too far, but you can see what it's going to do. And I'm also going to do the aqua and a little bit of the purple. So this actually makes a smooth arrow shape. The reason is this, it's going to take care of any artifacts. Because if we just move this one, look, we're going to be left with real serious artifacts. So instead, we're going to drop this in and create these little lines looking great. Now what I'm going to do is up here in the saturation is I'm going to boost the saturation of the aqua and the blue as well like so. So now the sky is looking incredibly dramatic. But I also, look at the building. It's in the oranges. So I'm going to actually boost this luminance. So it's going to actually lift this building. Look at this. It makes the building come to life. I'm going to do the same with the yellows and that little bit with the reds. Okay. And what I want to do up here in the luminance, uh, sorry, the, the hue, is I actually want to add a little bit more red to the building. So I don't want it to go yellow. I'm just going to push the oranges to the reds. I'm going to push the reds up towards the oranges, away from pink, and then the yellow, actually, I'm going to go towards the orange. Look how it goes, that little bit red, but not too far. So let's look at the before and the after. Now we're starting to come alive. And the next thing I want to do is I want to... The sun is coming from this side over here. You can see this because this side is light and this side is dark. So we're going to help this, and we're going to use a technique which is kind of like dodge and burn. I have a tutorial on that, so please feel free to check it out. And I'm going to come into the brush, double-click effect, so it re-centers everything. And then I'm going to go highlights up, and I'm actually going to go shadows up too as well. Now with um, the flow at, uh, at about 80, somewhere around there, again, really loosely, I don't need to be doing this accurately really, is I'm just going to paint on, so I can't see much that I've done there, so I'm actually going to highlight this a little bit higher, I'm just going to, just while I can see it, so th sometimes I would use the exposure, even though I'm not going to leave it like that, so I can see what I'm editing, and I want to do all of these ends here, okay, so it's actually highlighting just the bits that are lit up, and you can actually see where the sun is hitting things, that's all just a few little hairs to lift it. And then I'm going to bring that saturation, this exposure back. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to boost the color temperature. So I'm going to make this look like the sun is hitting it. Okay. So somewhere around there. And let's lift up those shadows, that hair more. Okay. That's looking great. What happens with the whites? I think the whites does it too much. So there's good. Now I'm going to add another new one. And I'm going to hit effect. And I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to go blue. The highlights I'm going to bring back, the shadows I'm going to bring back, and the whites I'm going to bring back. And I'm going to go on the opposite side. So wherever there's shadows, if you look, I'm, I've added a little bit too much blue, I think, actually. But I'm going to come into all of these areas wherever there should be shadows. And I'm shape, changing the size of my brush as I'm doing all of this. But I, if you look, I'm just going into where there's those areas. Not too much. I'm not trying to overdo this and make it look fake. Okay? Just want to do this hair. So again, the blue, I think I went too far in the blue. Okay, so I'm just going to go a little bit of the blue like this. Let's come out of this. Now again, before and after, watch, watch the difference now. Before, after, see how this building has come to life a little bit now. Starting to really come out of, of it. But what I can see, I've got this little bit of a glow. And I know that this has come from this filter that we added here. I know that this, if I hit O, you see this is where this has come in. I've actually made this line too hard. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up here. And I'm going to make it a lot more graduated like so. And then I'm going to take the brush, erase, and I'm going to just erase this out a little bit more smoothly into the sky. There you go. And by doing this, we're going to lose those horrible lines that unfortunately I created.
great, this is looking better already. So what else would I do to this image? Well, I want to boost these shadows in here a little tiny bit. So by using this curves thing here, the, the tone curve, we can see what we can do. So I want to, these are all living in the mid-tone. So I'm gonna boost up these mid-tones of the building, like so, but I don't want to lose my shadows. So I'm gonna drop that in here. Let's turn this on and off. Great, I think that's looking fantastic. I think I've gone a little bit too far. That's looking really nice. So I'm starting to enjoy this image now, but I do want to give it a little bit of, I'm gonna give it a little bit of yellow in the highlights. Not a lot like this, because this is gonna be fake. Just a hair, tiny little bit in the highlights just to warm it up. And then the final thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into sharpening, okay? So I'm gonna hold down option while I do this. Okay, and it's gonna show me how much sharpening by turning it black and white so you can really see. So I'm just gonna go around 50. Let's come in here. Okay, I just wanna look at what this looks like. But then the radius is gonna show me how deep really it's gonna add the sharpening. Like that's gonna be way too much, but I don't want it to be too flat. So I'm gonna lift this up around here. Because this is a landscape I have with a building, I can push this a little bit further than I usually would. Detail. Now do I want it to do every little thing or do I want to only do the important lines. I'm gonna keep this pretty low because I only want it to do the edge lines. I don't want to add it to the sky. And then masking, really important. What do I want it to affect? Only affects what's white. I'm holding down Option or Alt on the PC and I'm gonna pull this up so it's only going to do all of those lines. Now, let's turn this sharpening on and off and see what this looks like. Off, and let's turn it on. Oh, it's just lifted it. I think I can actually go a little bit higher on this. That's looking amazing. I really like this image. Let's look at the before, and then let's look at the after. I think it's looking really great. One thing I might actually add to this would be a little bit of darkening to the edges, so kind of a vignette, but I do this using the radial filter. Something like this. Remember, invert the mask, double-click effect to reset, and from this, I'm going to um, pull back the exposure just a little bit, press O so that I can see what I'm doing. See, it's kind of ruined the image down here. I don't like it, so I can just go like this. I've gone way too far on that exposure, but what I can do is pull back the sharpness. So it's gonna make the edges that little bit softer, okay, which I think is gonna to help to bring in the focus just a little bit. So let's look at the before and the after. So I'm gonna come in here and boost the clarity actually, because I missed this present section. I'm gonna lift the, the vibrance and pull back the saturation. Just a little bit before and after. I'm extremely happy with this image now. I think that we've made some great changes. So that's how I would edit this photograph. But remember, it's not hard fast. This is how it should be done. This is just what I would personally do. So if you like this edit, please give me a thumbs up and share this tutorial. Also, give me a comment. Tell me what you think, what you liked, what you didn't like. If you have a photograph that you would like me to edit in the future, head over to Facebook, like the page, and send it over to me. Anyway, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of the mic, thank you.